Welcome. Welcome. Housewives of True Crime. Monday edition. Monday. How's it? <laughs> it's good. How's it going? It's great. It's fab. It is. It's fab tabulous. It is. Tab fabulous. <laughs> it's all of it. It's a cute sweatshirt you <sighs> got clink word. clink going on. Yeah, I'm representing up in up up in the house. Yeah, today my kid actually wore a Housewives of True Crime sweatshirt to school, and um, I didn't say anything because if I said like "nice sweatshirt," you know, she would take that shit off, right? What was it, Willow or yeah. Ruby? <laughs> it's Which Willow. One? She's in the oh. fifth grade, but sometimes I'm not sure if she can read. <laughs> so maybe she, I think it just has fun <laughs> colors. <laughs> she wasn't even paying attention to what it said. She just was like, no, yeah, she totally was not. She's a little, she's in the willow world. You know, I love it. I love it. Now the teachers are going to be listening. And so, you know, oh no. And you know, that is the one thing I have. Yeah. The word is out at the school, but, um, I have never had a teacher actually tell me that they listen that it would be, um, that's difficult. But they do. Well, I don't want to know about it because then I, I already have enough diarrhea when I'm sitting there at my parent-teacher conferences. I don't want to have any more knowing that they know that I talk about murder and say fuck a lot. You know? <laughs> I know. I know. That's that's where I get like, ooh, like parents, like are my friend's parents that listen and teachers or anybody of authority. I'm like, ooh, you know what? I... I'm sorry. Yeah, please, I sometimes yeah, it's maybe slips. find something else. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, that you should encourage Just them to listen be to real open NPR minded or else, because, you know, smart. Yeah. No, well, no, mm. I think they can listen. It's just they have to be, just know that we are, uh, we talk off the cuff. Trashy. And... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. I not all the time notch, I Sometimes. think I think I think it is uh yeah they're like oh you tab has this other side of her because you know I've met tab in those situations she you know she's real serial she she pulls profesh off you know talks yeah, good game it's true and then they're like <laughs> and you're friends with her I'm like oh yeah there's another side <laughs> yeah oh yeah. man I'm like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't cuss all the time. She says fuck too. I just heard her say it in the car when she spilled salsa on herself. Yep. Oh, I did. Uh Uh-huh. I did. Mm -hmm. I did do that. (laughs) And I am at the old house recording and I still like it. There's nothing here. So I couldn't even get it off of my sweatshirt, which is balls to the walls. Listen, life is good. It is. The sun is shining. The weather is sweet. We went to the beach this weekend. We did a little camping and I had a couple friends come and that was great. And so I bought some hula hoops. I -hmm. thought this is going to be. Did you do it? I thought that was going to be a great idea. Well, I was loading up the car and my 73 year old neighbor across the street saw me with the hula hoops. And said, oh, that's so great. You and your friends. And I was like, well, I was thinking it was more for the children, Jerry. But um, yeah, I might give the hula hoop in a try. She's like, well, let's see mm-hmm. what you got. Right there in the middle of the street. I can't hula hoop. Can't. I no. cannot. Nope. Can't do it. But do, let me tell you, you my 73-year-old neighbor can. I don't know if I ever could. Yeah. I mean, I think I got a couple of hula hoops in. Right? I a couple I, like around I, a I couple. Won the, I won the hula hoop contest recently. You did. Yeah, recently. I can hula, I can hula hoop. Hot <laughs> damn! Yeah, at the Palm Springs. Got yeah. a free ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am impressed. Listen, no, well, thanks. this Jerry kept. She kept telling me the different ways to, you know, move it up and down and adjusting my stance. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like when I'm at the gym and they're like, "You need to lift more weight or whatever. Or you're doing it wrong." And you have to tell them, like, "No, that's as much as I can lift. I'm just not strong." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No, like, I, like oh, I really man. can't hula hoop, but I'm still I'm gonna." Sorry. Bet. Because it parallels that motion, <laughs> just in case anyone wondered. 
<laughs> oh my God. I'm sure everybody was wondering. They were like, if she can't hula hoop, she is definitely. She can't do anything uh, else. I know. Isn't that yeah. the dirty thing about like hula hoops, rocking horses? When you, come on, when you see your kids do those, sometimes you're like, oh God, I'm not trying to see that. Yeah. Oh my God, you are Just saying. too much, dude. <laughs> no, I didn't. I have not thought that, but now I am going to. Now you will. There. <laughs> Yes. Um, I will tell you, my kids changed the phone number on my, like, or the name on my phone number of Sean to daddy. Right. Cause they, that's like, oh, it's yeah. their dad. Right. But Hi, daddy. now every yeah. time <laughs> Sean calls, <laughs> it pops up like daddy. And I don't care when it's like just me, but when somebody else is in the car, like a friend of mine, and it says like, "Oh yeah, that's calling. so embarrassing." I know, I know. They're like, "Oh my god, this girl is dirty a freak in the sheets." Yeah. No, but I, I've not. never it been one really of those like women that innocent. found the word "daddy" hot. Like that's not hot. No, me neither. So that's I'm not why be calling it's you daddy. Funny to me. No, I yeah. No, don't call me daddy. What's that podcast like? Yeah, no. Uh, no, don't call her. Don't call me. Don't call anyone except your dad. Okay. <laughs> that is mm -hmm. how it goes around mm -hmm. here. All right. So do you have a podcast about a daddy or not? Oh my gosh. No. Do I ever? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> yeah. This week's crime is a listener suggestion from Katie Pendergast. Pendergast. Katie. Pendergast. Katie, she is Katie in the P. Housewives of True Crime Facebook group, and I always enjoy her contributions. So thanks for that. And thanks for the suggestion as well, Katie. Yeah. So let me tell y'all about one William Allen Jordan, a man who met Michelle Lewis in 2013 in Florence, New Jersey. Michelle Full Disco Biscuit works as a labor and delivery nurse. That's a good one, right? That is a fun one. Michelle is a divorced single mama who was looking for new love, and so she took her quest to the interweb. She found a site called establishedmen.com. Can't blame her for liking mm. the sound of that, right? It's not sugardaddy.com. Oh, my God. I didn't even plan the <laughs> daddy tie-in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, established establishment sounds profesh, right? Now, it of course, does. I felt compelled to visit this site for research purposes. And let me tell you, it's anything but. You either log on as established man seeking beautiful girl or beautiful girl. Which, by the way, the word girl, like, just, like, skeeves me out. Like, right away, mm, like, established yeah. men need to be looking Not for women. Women women. You know, right? I have been getting these, I've been getting these iPhone or no, these Instagram DMs. And it's like, I barely just turned 18. And I'm like, that's fucking gross. Who's sending yeah. this shit? And I yeah. always block and report because I'm like, this is not good. And why are they sending it to me? Look at you doing but, yes. good in the world, fighting crime, well, reporting. I, I'm trying. Dirty birds. Trying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyways, uh, long story short, you know, when I did some investigating, the site is now owned by those dirty dogs at Ashley Madison, the Cheaters Are Us dating site. And so I'm sort of imagining mm -hmm. it was more on the up and up in 2013 when Michelle was using the site because she does not strike me as the type that would be interested in less than genuine loving. So anyways, Michelle meets William, who introduced himself as Liam. They met at a mall and talked for hours, and they really hit it off. They had shared interest. They read the same books. Liam was really good at asking a lot of questions about Michelle. You know, single dudes, for your information, that is the hottest. Don't go on about yourself mm -hmm. too much. Act like you find women interesting. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it for very long. I don't remember the last time Fred found like something I said interesting. I really don't. Seriously. 
<laughs> After you hook them, right? You're like, hook yeah, them. Yeah. And then... then... Then that's it. Yeah. Then you can go back to yeah. like rolling your eyes, you know, tuning them out. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, William, aka Liam, is not unfortunate looking. He is mixed race, fit, but here's the panty dropper. He speaks with a British accent. Oh, right. My God. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course, she didn't drop her panties right away because, you know, this is not her first rodeo. She's in new, no rush. She's a grown woman. But she She's did a see lady. a future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The one red flag about her new interest was that he didn't volunteer much information about his employment, just that he worked a lot and he worked a lot at night for a tech company. She was quick to give him a pass because being a nurse, she worked the night shift too. Michelle and Liam kept meeting about twice a week, and he began to open up a bit more over time about his profession. He said in addition to working for the tech company, he was a chauffeur of sorts for British dignitaries, like Secret Service-ish. Mm. He also divulged that the tech company was a medical software company and his reason for employment was a way of gaining health information for the British government. Crazy, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds he like very fancies important. himself a spy. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. Okay. So Michelle did an interview with the Philadelphia Inquirer where she said, sure. She questioned him about his job. You know, she actually had a list of questions and his answer seemed plausible. Quote, I didn't completely believe it, but I didn't discredit it. She explained, I wouldn't know. It's not my field. I'm not an expert. She says that she went back to the internet and tried to find something on him, but she couldn't. I mean, that seems reasonable, right? Yeah. What so year Michelle was this again? 2013. 2010? Oh, 13. Okay. 13. So Michelle is, you know, feeling the hotness of this, you know, high profile 007 vibe, you know, Liam is putting mm -hmm. off. And so she banged him. Now, regarding the first bang, I must tell you, it happened at a quality inn. No shade. Mm -hmm. I'm sure most of us have gotten banged a time or 10 at a quality inn. But Michelle, <laughs> as a grown <laughs> woman, for the first time you bang, I think, I think you got to hold out for a Hilton, honey. I mean, at least, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red flag. A red flag. 007 for, doesn't bang you for. at a quality inn. Okay. No. Maybe a holiday no. inn, but not a quality inn. Not a holiday inn express. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I take the double tree. It, or isn't it called the double tree? They give you the cookies. Double tree is nice. And I like those cookies. Uh huh. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So as the relationship progressed, he asked her to get security clearance. Now, this security clearance came with a lot of paperwork and Michelle was not with it. I mean, I get a girl. I hate paperwork too. Yeah. I'm not trying to give anyone my social security number. Like at all. So he wants I don't even like giving it to the DMV. Number. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm like, don't you already have that? I don't think I need to give it to you again. Okay. Well, Liam told her that if she completed the security clearance, though, she could have more communication with him. She could meet his parents even. But she still said, no, I really don't like paperwork, but we can still bang. Interestingly <gasps> enough, like though, her. she, <laughs> yeah. She, although she passed on the paperwork, the government organization that Liam worked for reached out to her. They sent her a text from a Washington, D.C. area code that said, We saw you inquired about an overseas property, a Allen home model. This was apparently code. And I mean, Michelle's so smart she got it. Like, because, you know, he's from overseas. His last name is Allen. Oh, yes. Right? And it's from okay. D.C. Get it? Super spy -y. Oh, Okay. 
soup. I mean, I <laughs> would be like totally like clueless. <laughs> yeah, like, um, no, I didn't yeah, block that junk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Report. Yeah. yeah. So she responded. And once she opened the communication, mm. it led to the men on the other line, presumably Liam's bosses, letting her know when, you know, Liam would be out of touch with her for a while. And things began happening, like cars with tinted windows would drive by real slow. And then Liam would call Michelle and say, they just saw you on your porch. So... Michelle is like, wow, he is really important. And she went with it. And she just had to take Liam whenever she could get him. And the relationship went on like that with Michelle and Liam kind of like the man of mystery for about a year. During that year, Liam proposed and Michelle accepted. But after a year, engaged or not, the whole mysterious thing started to lose its allure for Michelle. And for her, she just wanted to know, okay, like, what gives? Liam's mm -hmm. bosses that she had continued communication with informed Michelle, by the way, that Liam was a real big deal on the war on terror. And she had to be really careful now because they could never be sure how much the terrorists knew about him. Well, that's actually kind of terrifying for a single mother to hear and might give some single mamas pause, right, about being involved with someone in Liam's line of work. Well, Liam was able to keep Michelle kind of on the hook by giving her a heads up on world events, which like, I'll keep you safe, baby. Listen, I'm so in the know. It is. I'm in the no, no, no. Okay. They're not touching me. So he gave her heads up about stuff she found really intriguing, like he told her hours before Kate Middleton had given birth. Well, he also, you know, like let it slip that the attacks on Syria or Syria were imminent, you know, which I mean is sort of serious too, right? But being a little in the know wasn't enough after a while for Michelle because it came with Liam's habit of last minute flaking on her and blaming the job. He had pulled that shit on Christmas when she was planning on introducing him to her family. And that time is, you know, it's a real stinger, right? So one day after banging while Liam was in the shower, Michelle went through his wallet. She came across an immigration card that said William Allen Jordan. Now, you know, she's one of us. So she had Googled Liam Allen already because that's what we do. But yeah. since this was a similar name, she thought, hmm, what would happen if I Googled William Allen Jordan? She was real motivated. Those are three to first find names, out. by the way. You know what? I had not made that connection, but you are correct. Those are three first names. Yeah. Okay. So Michelle's real motivated to find out what the real deal was at this point because she was now carrying his child. Oh, so gosh. yeah, right. That'll make you like get past the like 007 sexy and just uh, yeah. double check that this is like legit, right? Okay, so what happened when she Googled William Allen Jordan was mind-blowing. She found out it was no secret that Liam was no secret agent. He had an international history of manipulating single mamas into believing he was a spy. And once they were on the hook, he would tell them, his identity had been compromised and they needed to fork over their life savings basically to save him and possibly themselves and their children. His con also involved bigamy and pedophilia. So Gross. he's a deranged monster. Uh-huh. And a woman in Scotland wrote a book about it. Mary Thompson was the author slash victim. And Michelle reached out to her right away. I read Mary's book and her story is even more bananas than Michelle's. And I will circle back to Mary. But as far as 
Michelle goes, when she began to understand how psychotic his con and criminal mind truly was, she made a difficult decision to terminate her pregnancy. Mm. She confronted who she now knew as William Allen Jordan. And he told her like, baby, yeah, I know there's some stuff out there, but whatever you think, you know, it's, it's all true, just misunderstandings. Right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> right. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Well to that, you know, she couldn't believe him or it like the jig is up, dude, you know? And so it occurred to her that if he was still willing to try to convince her that he was a secret agent, even after she had found him out, maybe she could find a way to keep William Allen Jordan from fraudulating more single mamas. So she took herself down to the spy shop. I don't know what they call those places really, you know, where they sell like all the hidden cameras and like pens that record conversations, you know, stuff like that. Do you know? Mm -hmm. I just call them the spy shop. Find, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure I they have a cooler name though. Things. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I bought one one time because I wanted to like record without anybody knowing because, you know, it's a, it's legal here in Texas to do so. You, mm -hmm. It's a one permission state, I guess, one-sided. Like I could say like, okay, it's good to record and then I can record you without you knowing. Unlike California, you need like both parties to consent. Mm. Interesting. Just to let you know. Mm -hmm. Well, Michelle bought herself a purse with a camera in it. And she went about meeting up with William at Dunkin' Donuts. She tries to get him to open up about his con to get evidence against him. He never really denied anything, but he never really admitted anything either. She met up with him multiple times over a couple of weeks, and she says she still banged him uh, to keep him talking, of course. He would say elusive things like, you think you know, but actually you don't know who I really work for. Right? I mean, I sort of mm -hmm. get it. Like, if you're already like that, like, kind of like that mind fucked, you're like, okay, like you want to be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong, yeah. but I think, and I'm not judging, but I do think it's possible that part of Michelle still wanted to believe his bullshit during that time. Like her head and yeah, her heart hadn't totally connected it because she's still banging him and she knows he's been convicted of pedophilia against a child the same age as her daughter. As hers. I mean, yeah. Gross. The That's level like, of disgust. No way. That's like you could never. No. No. Mm -mm. So, I mean, I'm, that's just what I think. Okay. Well, one day she was off to meet him and her mama didn't hear back from her. And given the situation, she got real concerned real quick. And so mm -hmm. she jumped the gun and mama filed a missing persons report on Michelle. Well, when Michelle returned and said she had just needed to unplug for a minute, her mother told her, well, now you're, now you're going to, this is what you get for not calling your mama. Now you're going to have to go explain yourself to the police. <laughs> okay. So in the process of explaining that she was not missing, she unpacked her whole story that this, you know, this dude says he's a spy. Now I'm spying on him. He has this criminal history abroad and the police thankfully told her, like, girl, you know, that's what we do, right? <laughs> like, we get bad guys. So <sighs> how about you let us do the investigating from here yeah. on out? Okay. I, I just have we all want to be a detective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. They intervened and gathered enough to charge him with theft by deception. Because Michelle had wired some money to the, quote, secret service oh my at God. some point. Okay. They also charged him with impersonating a police officer. You know, that's that's a crime, mm -hmm. right? It's a no-no. And sexual assault by fraud. 
which I didn't even know was a thing, but in some states it is. It is like, fraudulation to have consensual sex with the other person if you are a big enough liar. Oh my I God, feel like awesome. there are a lot of posers out there that are dangerously close to being arrested, including myself, if this law is enforced. Me, because Wait, I wear Spanx, sometimes two pairs. Yeah. Two pairs of Spanx is very deceptive, y'all. I have this getup that looks like a toddler bathing suit. Have you seen it? I mean, I pull that thing off. It's like a can of biscuits. I mean, it, that is fraudulation, <laughs> right? Okay. Oh my gosh. That's actually kind of funny and, and kind of true. Everyone's a poser. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyhow, spoiler, William didn't end up getting convicted of sexual assault by fraud. He was sentenced to three years in 2014 for theft by deception. Since his release in 2017, he has kept a low enough profile that not even I could find him. I mean, I have a no pretty way. good feeling. Yeah. But somehow, Did you find, like, um, somebody, I know where his fan, I mean, I'm think just saying, him? listen, if I were to put You're my money on it, stuff. I'd say South Carolina. Okay. okay. Just leave it. We'll okay. just leave it out there. Cause I think someone will eventually, I think, find him again. What is balls is that he is a registered sex offender abroad. But that doesn't equate to him having to register here because if he mm. did, I would have found him right away. Right? Right. But William Allen Jordan, the heat is on because of this new British documentary out about him, which our listener friend Katie watched. And I was not able to because you can't stream it in the U.S., I know that Mary Thompson participated in it, and I told you I read her book, so I will give you the synopsis of her story. So Mary meets William while she's a single mother, and he had told her he was working for Central Intelligence in IT and was recruited for the job as an American. So, I mean, I think he probably had an American accent, so that's like hot in reverse, right? So... I suppose, again, he's giving 007 vibes on top of mm -hmm. doing all the things these con men, you know, Dirty John types do. You know, it's like the love bombs, flowers, love notes, whatever she was interested in, he was interested in too, you know, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Okay. Yeah. She marries him, has two babies with him. She says, it did seem like he had a good job for a period of time. She says they had a very comfortable life. But one day he came to her and said, my cover's been blown now. And this was in the early 2000s, right? So just post 9-11, when fear of terrorism was running high. And he mm -hmm. told her the Taliban was after him. Taliban. They had to pay them off. And at this point, Mary had been married to him for four years. And so Gosh. she did what you do if you really believe in your heart the freaking Taliban is after your family. She sold the way everything. you say it. Her Gretchen. house, her clothes. I mean, well, it's true. Okay. Taliban. She, it's called the Taliban. The Taliban. Okay. Well, I am known to mispronounce things. Okay. Okay. It's, it's funny. She sells everything. Clothes off her back. Her house. Cash is in her retirement. Ev ev everything you can do, right? Because mm -hmm. she is genuinely believes her life, her children's lives are in danger. Phone calls kept coming in. They needed more money. And she went to every length to get it for them, living a total nightmare. Now, during her initial courtship with William, she had questioned the whole, you know, secret agent thing and even mm -hmm. done a little investigating herself. She had found an address associated with him and went to it and saw children's toys in the yard and came to the natural conclusion that he was married with children. 
Well, of course, he had an explanation for the whole, yeah, maybe my name is on another house kind of thing. It was his he sister's. He said it was a, he, no, he said it was a cover house. And there was another oh. agent who lived there and posed as his wife. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, they even drag some kids around to not raise suspicions. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Mary's like, okay, you know, good explanation. Okay, well, fast forward some years later, the so-called agent that lived at that house dialed up Mary and said, are you Mrs. Jordan? And she said, yes. And she said, I am the other Mrs. Jordan. And under the circumstances, Mary was like, okay, no big deal. I already know about this. Like, you know agent wife, right? Oh, right. But then the caller told her, I've been told you're an agent. And Mary, having been told she was an agent, all of a sudden, you know, snapped into focus the deep deception. Right? Oh my God. But it's years of Turns deception. out, of course, years. Yes. Yes. They were both married to William. That's where the bigamy oh, part comes in. God. Yeah. Listen, I cannot, like, can you imagine your husband trying to deal with two households? I can't. No. My husband? Uh, yes. No. I can't imagine my husband, he barely tolerates me. Like, I can't imagine I him tolerating, like, another woman in his life. No. I know. Like I could see okay. like a girl, a girlfriend on the side, but not two wives, right? Wives and children. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah, different. No. Yeah. That's a good point though. Yeah. Okay. So of course they're both married to William and the other Mrs. Jordan had two children from a previous marriage and five with William. Oh. What? That's a lot My of kids. God. Okay. So Mary's book is crazy because she details the conversations she had with this other woman that even though they both knew that they had been deceived, there was like some jealousy between them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like crazy. I could see okay. that. And by the way, he had also told Mary that he was infertile prior to knocking her up. So she believed she had like miracle babies <laughs> with him. And now she's being told, you know, he shot out like five fertile loads into some, some other booth. She's real mad about that. But like, that's all like his MO. He likes the single women who have some kind of settlement. Well, I should say he likes single mothers, right? Cause they're already like, like stable enough to have some kind of settlement or something, little nest egg. Mm-hmm. And then he gets them pregnant so he can really control them. And in Mary's book, she wrote about the insane level he of control he had over women, even after like the jig was up with the other Mrs. Jordan. She, this other Mrs. Jordan calls up Mary Okay. And tells her that like, oh, it just occurred to me. I get it now. You were chosen to make babies with him because of his job in intelligence, because you both are so smart and he, we need more mixed race babies in super spy world. Oh my God. Was she like, no, (laughs) she's like, no, like, it's not like, it's, it's not real. Like it's all not real, but it just like accepting it, like happens in steps. Yeah. I think because it's years. Oh, it's It's years. This woman said something. So five children. Seven total oh, years of a, of believing. Yeah. 
This other Mrs. Jordan told her that she had caught William having many affairs in the past, including one with their nanny, who he fathered oh. two children with. Oh, God, this guy is a piece. Yeah. He also carried on an affair with a young girl who had interviewed to be the nanny, who ended up taking her own life weeks after meeting William, supposedly when she realized he wasn't going to leave the wife she had met when she interviewed to be the nanny. Oh, that is like so awful. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. She also told Mary about the girl that imprisoned William. The reason why he's a registered sex offender for pedophilia, who was the daughter of their friends out there. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know or really care to know much about the details of that, except he was charged and pled guilty and served two years for the crime. Gross. And then he was not only welcomed back and reunited with his wife and children when he was released, but also the family and the girl he assaulted. No. Yes. Yes. The mind control powers are so next level of this man. I hate that Mary or any of the victims went through any of this, but what I sort of just loved about Mary was that when she uncovered all these lies, she says she was relieved because I'm telling you, she had been living in fear of the Taliban for her children, you know? So she's mm -hmm. like, who cares about the $300,000 he took for me? It's just money. Now I'm free. I don't have to be yeah. afraid anymore. You know, this is not real. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that is it, right? Yeah, it's true. So Mary went to the authorities and, you know... He was arrested and charged with bigamy and theft by deception. He was sentenced to six years and served around three and then was deported back to the U.S. Mary picked up the pieces of her life and then went on to write the book, The Bigamist, which is now in its third edition because as the years pass, more victims find her and then she adds in their stories. Oh As of gosh. 2023, he has 14, 14 known children ranging in age from 40 to four. And oh. there are likely, you know, many more women that have fallen prey to him that won't share their stories. I'm, but I'm telling you, women, wow. if you're out there, like, don't, don't feel ashamed. I know that I might sound like I'm making light of his crimes at times, but I don't doubt that he was really good at what he did because the he interviews obviously was. with the women, these women are intelligent that he conned. And so it's not like a, come on girl, like, where's your head at? I mean, when you hear like, these are well educated, smart women we would hang out with. This yeah. is so bananas. I can. And also I myself have been fraudulated. So I, I get it. Like maybe someday I'll share that one, but um, I'm not promising. But uh, on Patreon only, you know, it, it on Patreon. But, you know, but it really, you know, it really can happen. And, you know, lastly, I just want to mention that he wore Jeffrey Dahmer glasses mm. um, frequently. And I always say that is that that's a red flag. Yeah. There is no occasion for those. <laughs> no, okay? there's not no. red flag. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Wow. I am just shook because this guy is still out there and he's most likely still doing this. Most likely. Mm -hmm. I mean, his youngest child is four. Yeah. Bananas. He's no spring chicken though. No. He's in his 60s now. Yeah, I was but thinking he was around 60-something. Um, well, mm -hmm. thank you. And crazy, 
ass case. You guys, if you want to come and see us, find us in Nashville on the last weekend in May 2024. We are going to Crime Con and we hope that you come too. We have a code. It's housewives. If you go to crimecon, got crimecon.com to purchase tickets and we will be there. We'll be on podcast row and we would love to meet you. Um, we are very engaged when we're there. So we'll hang out with you and it is a real good time. It's very informative. There are people there that, you know, are looking for their loved ones, looking for answers of their loved ones and probably crimes that you're invested in will be there. So I think it's um it's definitely worth worth a shot to try at least one time and I think Nashville is really the best time to the best place to go, right, Gretch? Well, obviously Nashville is the best place to go. I cannot wait to to get some crime with a side of hot chicken. But uh, you that is a good point that the incredible stories. Remember that woman that we met that had been kidnapped as a child. Yes. And, you know, she spoke then, about, you know, and then finding out, I can't remember her name on the top of my head, but imagine uh, finding yeah. out that, you know, like her whole life had been a lie. It was so, her daughter yeah, was with her. Was they were kidnapped. awesome. I mean, you just meet the coolest oh. people. Yeah, you really do. It's it's yeah. such a great um, experience, I guess. I want to say great time, but it is a great time, but it's also the experience that you get is, yeah, it's just really intriguing. Also, if you have not tried our five crimes products, I promise you, you will love them. Go to F I V E crimes.com. By the way, I guess the, I couldn't buy the other URL with the five, like how we write it. And that guy is trying to extort me for money to buy Fuck his you, URL, right? which is like, dude, okay. Everybody just know it's F-I-V-E crimes.com. Don't let this guy extort me for money. <laughs> um, and the hair serum seriously works like a freaking dream. My hair is longer than it's ever been in my entire life. If you're watching on YouTube, it's like past my boobs, which is like seriously like the first time in my life that it's gone that long. And then I love that you just said boobs. That's so funny. I know. I kind of was like, do I say boobs? What do I say? Breasts? That sounds weird. I just heard my son say boobs for the first time. He (laughs) was, when we were on the beach, they, they buried, you know, one of their friends in the sand and made him a mermaid. And the next day he was talking about it. He's like, that was so fun. And we gave him boobs. And then he was cracking up. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. You are, you are growing up, son. Yeah. Never heard you say boobs before. Um, With a little giggle, like he was a little Beavis and Butthead. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, so um, I think that's all, you guys. So check out Five Crimes. If you haven't given us a a review on Apple, please do so. It helps our algorithm, and all these algorithms are crazy. So please just pop on there and give us maybe two minutes of your time. That would be awesome. Uh, And we'll catch you on Thursday if you listen to our bonus content. And if not, we'll see you next Monday. Clinkity clink. Clink, clink.